And we're back with another video. I'm doing NA plus T on my BF Fairmont, so I'm going to put in an upgraded uh, fuel pump. So the fuel pump I'm using is a 255 Warbler pump, or known as a TI Automotive pump. So that's the part number there. Now this is a direct replacement for the factory pump, so I just need to split this whole assembly and put the new one into there. Now when you separate these fuel pumps, these hoses, the factory ones, these corrugated hoses, um, they're all hard. They're almost impossible to get off without damaging them. So I've gone and bought some replacement ones. Um, TR Performance, where I bought the fuel pump from, also sell replacement hoses. These are like $11 each. And these are the same length as the factory BABF ones. So hopefully they'll work. And just for peace of mind, I'm also gonna put a hose clamp on each end of these hoses as well. So we'll open up the pump and see what's inside. So there's a little bit of wiring there. It comes with a replacement hose, but that's a rubber type hose. It's probably fuel ready, but I'm gonna use these ones anyway. Uh, put a couple of extra clamps in there. You get a couple of clamps in there. New filter and the pump itself. So we'll open this bad boy up. So there it is, not much to it. Like I said, it's just a direct replacement for the factory fuel pump, but it's just a um, higher flowing pump. So it'll just help get more fuel up to the fuel rail. So here's what's in the kit. You just get a little um, instruction manual there in a few different languages. You get a new plug with it, so you will need to do a tiny bit of wiring, but they give you these connectors to do that. So it's pretty straightforward. Basically, it's just because the plug on the top of the pump is different to the factory plug, which is down in there. So you're just changing that out. Filter, and yeah, not much else to it, a couple of clamps. Now you do get a piece of, I'm assuming this would be submersible hose um, in the kit, but like I said, I've just bought some new ones, so I'm gonna be using these ones. So I'll stop blabbering on and get into changing this out. So first thing you need to do is pull apart this assembly. Mine is still in the car, but my car is actually at a shop at the moment. So good chance to get this done. So when I get the car back, I can just pull out the fuel pump that's in it and directly drop this one straight in. So first thing I'm gonna do is cut the old hoses, just cut them off, get rid of them. There's one. And I'll have to get that one off. There we go, just cut the second one. So now, I've got to separate this assembly. As you can see, there's two little tabs here. One here, and one on this side. You need to sort of pry those open and pull this whole bottom part of the assembly down away from the top part. So I'm gonna need two hands to do that. I'll get a little screwdriver and I'll pull it apart. Okay, got that separated. Now that came off, it was a bastard at first, but I didn't realize what I was doing wrong. It came off really easy once I figured it out. So you've just got the two locking tabs here, but when you go to separate it, it didn't actually separate. It just felt tight, like something wouldn't budge. And what it was is this return line here, this little, this little step here, this recess, that bottom edge sits over the top of this part here. So this sits underneath that. So I was pulling and pulling, and this lip here was just getting caught on that. So as you're separating it, you just gotta put your thumb on that, sort of push it out the way, and then the whole thing actually slid apart nice and easy. So now I'll get the old pump out, and then we'll look at reassembling it. All right, so I've got the two hoses on. One hose goes onto the assembly, one goes onto the pump. I've also put the filter on the bottom of the pump, so that's ready to slide in. But just a little tip for getting these hoses on, if you're using these hoses, these ends are quite hard and pretty hard to get over the barbs. And this is plastic in here, so it just, everything starts to crack and feels like it's gonna break. So all I've done is I went and got some boiling water, just in a little cup here, and just dipped the ends of the hoses in that for probably 10 seconds, and it softened them up enough, and they slid over beautifully. So I wanna get some hose clamps on the hoses, but I wanna get it all together first and see where it's sitting. So I'll do that. I stripped off all the old hose. Um, all I did was use a razor blade, so it's all hard and stiff but you can cut it. Um, what I did, I'll show you on this one. I'll just quickly show you. So you need a really sharp razor blade. <clears throat> this is brand new. And as you can see, I've just put a slit in there. I'm not sure if you can see that, just there. And then I've just grabbed it with the pliers on here and just sort of pinch it and twist it. And that's pulled straight off. And as you can see, it goes really hard and stiff. And because it's onto plastic, you just want to be careful. You don't want to go snapping off any of the actual um, plastic barbs because then, yeah, you'd have to replace your, your assembly. So just go slow, nice sharp razor blade, and you should be good. 
Now before I've connected those hose clamps, I've just pulled the whole thing apart again just to show you how it works. So all it is in here is a spring. So this spring here just sits in this little recess inside there, just slides down in there. That's it, that's all there is to it. And this, these posts here on this part, I'll show you. So these posts here have little um, barbs on them. And those barbs, once they slide through this top section, there's just little, um, I'll just show you, little locating tabs. These guys here, these little plastic ones. So all I've done is I've just yanked on that to get it out. If you just give it a nice sort of quick pull, it just pops straight out, which pops these out of the, um, the bottom section. But before you go clipping it back in, you just want to make sure you push these little hooks in again, just these little plastic ones. Just sort of squeeze them in again so it just makes sure that they grab onto these barbs when you put these back in through the top just sort of show you how that works okay so i thought i'd show you while i had it apart again um the process that i'm doing using to put it all back together just to make life easy for yourself otherwise if you leave these things in at the top you're trying to do everything in that little tiny gap between the top part and the bottom and it's just yeah it's just a pain in the ass so all you need to do I've got the bottom casing here First thing to do, or well, first thing I'm gonna do, now I'm not a professional, this is just how I'm doing it, is put the spring back into there. As you can see, I've got a piece of hose on there, no hose clamp yet, because the clamp will get caught trying to put this top piece in. I do have a hose clamp on the pump, just loosely, just so I can spin that so that can squeeze in when I slide this one on, and then I'll tighten that once I've got the top cap on. I've got the filter in, so now I'll sit the pump into this part of the body. Now the bottom of the pump, as you can see, it has the filter there. And that little X part on the plastic sits on the base of the, um, inside this housing here. So you can push it all the way down and that just gives it a bit of room to still get suction from the pump. So you've just got to fold the filter up like that and just squeeze it in there. So I just twisted the pump on the filter. So the filter sits against the, the back part there, nice and flush, as you can see in there. It's just sitting in there, just loosely. So now, I'll get this top cap on. So I've just wiggled it down just loosely. Just got to make sure you're not pinching on the back down inside where the filter is. So I've just wiggled that down. And then you've just got to maneuver these two parts here to pop out because of the corrugated hoses getting caught. And then you've got to remember that little round piece down the bottom here on the return line it needs to be pulled out so it can come over push that around this little step here. So I'll push this down and clip it in and then we'll have a look at it. There we go, just clip that in. So as you can see there, that little round piece, that's the piece that gets caught when you're trying to separate it. You just gotta push it across with your thumb, just gently, so it clears that little lip there. But that clipped in nicely. So now I'll get this hose clamp on, get another hose clamp on here, and then we can look at getting the top done. Okay, I got the two clamps on, and just before I clip the top on, I thought what I'll do, I'll plug the wiring connector in, as you can see there, into the pump. So this just has piggy tails on the back here. So you just cut these to length. And what you need to do is use this existing plug from your original pump uh, to plug into the bottom hat here, just here. So the idea is to cut this off, but cut it with some length of cable. When you cut this plug off, you've got to reuse it, like I said, but make sure you leave yourself enough cable to work with. So my plan is to um, do the join, but try and make the end result the same length as this. So I'm gonna um, put the phone down. I'll measure this with two hands. I'm just gonna use the connectors that came with the kit. I would like to solder this or something, something a bit um, better than that, but this is what they give you. So that's what we'll use. Alrighty, just connected that cable. So that's ready to go. Just black to black, red to gray. Um, now I just thought I'd quickly show you, this is what I think what they call the Venturi. So this little hole on the end here is what feeds this return line. Now, if you have a more demanding fuel system and a higher flowing pump, like a 460 or even a 525, I think they are, um, you would drill that out. But just this being NA, this should be fine. So I don't have to really touch this. But I just popped it out of the bottom just so I could have a look at it. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to clip that back in. All it is, there goes my hose clamp. It literally just clips into the bottom section here. Just in there, as you can see, it's got like little barbs on it. So it just clips itself in. So I'll just push that back in and then I'll get the top back together. All right, I've got one hose on with the hose clamp, as you can see up there. Just got one more to do and I'll push the uh, two rods down and they've clipped in. So we've got the spring action that we're supposed to have. So now I've just got to connect this last hose on. Got some boiling hot water there just to loosen off the, the rubber or whatever it is, plastic. So let's see if we can get it on. 
there we go all back together now you might notice the hose clamps have changed i got a bit ocd and pulled the whole thing apart and made sure the same hose clamps were on the bottom and the same were on the top but i had a bit of trouble getting the last hose on now i accident i think i accidentally left it in the hot water for too long and it actually um i think it shrinked the actual tubing so yeah that wasn't a great thing so it was a pain in the ass to get on and as you can see there it munted it up a little bit it just sort of shriveled up on itself i think that'll be fine i might heat it up with a heat gun and just squeeze it with some pliers just to sort of get that little bit of a kink out of it as you can see there but apart from that it's all back together We've got our spring action that we're meant to have so hopefully that's all good now the car is booked in uh, in two days for a tune, so I have to get this into the car. It's actually not here, it's getting the um, dump pipe welded up as we speak. Well, it was supposed to be ready this morning, so hopefully I'll hear back from him today because I need the car back so I can get this in the car. But that'll be it for this video. Another job done, ticked off the list. Hopefully that's all good. First one of these I've actually done, but it's uh, pretty straightforward really. Only thing I'll probably do next time is put the hoses on first. Once they're on for the first time, the hose is still a bit um, malleable. So you can put them on and then actually pull them off without any issues. So I'll probably put all the hoses on first. Um, so you flare out the ends of the, um, the hose itself. And then I'd probably connect them to the top hat first. And then when you slide the top hat down, just slide them onto the pump and the, um, the return here as well. But we'll know that for next time. Hopefully this all works and I won't have to take the other one out and piss fart around because I've got the other pump assembly there. If this doesn't work, I'll just take this pump out and put it in the other one. But I'm pretty confident that it should be good. But I guess we'll soon find out. Hopefully it's all good and we're another step closer to getting this car back on the road. Really close now. We're only two days away. Cannot wait. Phew.